What's up everybody? My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesia resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this video, I'm going to be telling you what I think you can do to get the most out of your upcoming anesthesia rotation. If you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to the channel. Let's go ahead and get started. So the very first thing that I'd encourage you to do is think about what you actually want to get out of the rotation. Now, if you're not planning on going into anesthesiology or if you're a resident in a different field who's rotating through your anesthesia department, I'd encourage you to think about what anesthesiologists do that are going to be relevant for your clinical practice. That might include airway management if you're going into ENT or emergency medicine, or that could just be IV placement, which is something that's gonna be relevant for practically any field. And especially if you're getting ready to start your intern year, that's a skill that you'd like to have. Now, if you are planning on going into anesthesiology, then pretty much everything that you see is going to be useful for you in the future. And so you'll have to think about what's gonna be the most useful as you're getting ready to embark on your rotation. You don't necessarily have to have an answer to that question, but it may be that you've already identified you'd like to work on procedures like airways or placing IVs, or maybe you'd like to gain more knowledge in terms of the drugs that are used in anesthesia, or you'd like to get a better understanding of airway anatomy in particular. Whatever the case may be, it's worth your while to spend some time thinking about what it is you'd like to get out of the rotation because it's more than likely that you'll find yourself in a position with either a resident or an attending asking you what you'd like to do or what your goals are. I'd say one of the best ways to make the most of your rotation is to prepare by reading both before your rotation and during it. As far as picking out reading material, there are pretty much two main entry-level textbooks that I'd recommend, and they contain about the same in terms of content, and it's just presented in a slightly different format. So one of those is called Baby Miller, and the other one is Morgan and McHale. I've personally tried reading both of them, and I find Morgan and McHale to be easier to digest, and a lot of my co-residents feel the same way. So you might try with that one, and then switch to Miller if you don't find that to be particularly helpful. Now, these textbooks are way too big and contain way too much information to be useful for a two or four week anesthesia rotation, and is really something that I think would be most helpful for somebody who's getting ready to start their first year of anesthesiology after they've completed their intern year. That being said, I've picked out a couple chapters that I think are gonna be really helpful for establishing a good foundational understanding of anesthesiology. In the description below, I've included the specific chapters that I think are gonna be most helpful for both books, and Miller and also Morgan and McHale. But just to give you a broad overview of the general topics that are covered in these chapters, that's cardiac physiology, pulmonary physiology, the anesthesia workstation, anesthesia monitoring, and also airway management. The other resource that I'd recommend you take a look at is Stanford's Anesthesia Guide, which I've also included a link below. I think there are some advantages and disadvantages to reading this guide. The advantages being it's a ton of really high yield information that's all distilled down into bullet points, but the disadvantage being that you don't get a lot of context for this information, which is why I think it's really useful to actually read out of the textbooks that I've included below. And the last thing that's really important for you to be reading about are your patients for each day. So you should be able to get your hands on a copy of the schedule for your upcoming cases when you're on your rotation. And so it's just really important that you look through and see what's the planned procedure? What's the patient's past medical history? Do they have any allergies? Have they ever had any anesthesia before? So you can get a sense of what's gonna be going on and what sort of conditions your patient has and how that's going to affect your anesthetic management of them. For many people rotating through anesthesiology, I think one of the most exciting procedures that we do is endotracheal intubation. And my recommendation for you as you get started, besides learning airway anatomy really well, is to just get in the habit of narrating exactly what you're seeing. Now, I'm not an attending anesthesiologist, but I have to imagine that for an attending who's watching an intubation, it can be a little scary when you've got someone who's at the beginning of their training doing an intubation and you have absolutely no idea what they're looking at. Uh, does this guy know what to look for? I guess the patient isn't desatting or bleeding, so... I wonder if he wants some help? Does he know what vocal cords look like? That tube looks pretty deep. Oh god, is he at the carina? Or the lower esophageal sphincter? Should I intervene right now? Oh god, I hope I don't lose my license. 
So you can make your attending's life a lot easier and also things a lot safer for your patient if you just make sure to narrate as you go along with each of your intubations. Okay, so I'm gonna start by scissoring the mouth open and the mandible moves nice and easily for me. Get a tongue sweep with my blade. And right now I'm just seeing back of the oropharynx. I'm gonna manipulate the head a little bit. And now I've got epiglottis in view. Still no cords. And oh, look at that. The cords just dropped into view. Shiny, white, pearly cords, wide open. This is the best grade one view I could imagine seeing. I'm gonna pass my endotracheal tube and I'm just to the left of the cords and now I've got my tube through the cords passing easily no resistance 21 centimeters at the lip it's done I think one of the best ways to get the most out of your anesthesia rotation while you're on it is to be asking lots of questions about why the resident or attending is doing what they're doing. For example, if you see the resident reach for isoflurane and turn that on instead of sevoflurane, you should ask, why did you choose one drug over the other? I'd encourage you to ask why for all sorts of things besides just drugs. Patient positioning, why an IV is being placed on one side instead of another, why they're using a nerve block or not using a nerve block, or why they decided to use general anesthesia instead of monitored anesthesia care. There are literally hundreds of different decisions that an anesthesiologist makes, even in a given case, and so picking up on why your resident or attending is making a decision is something that can be really helpful for your learning. Just make sure that when you're asking questions, you're asking them at opportune times and not when there's, for example, an airway emergency or a patient's becoming acutely hypotensive. When you're on your rotation, I would encourage you to always have a piece of paper and a pen with you to be taking notes on things that you've learned or things that you need to go read up on. Specifically, if you see a drug being used more than once, or you see a procedure being done more than once, or you hear the resident or attending talking about something and it seems important, then you should write that down so you can either follow up on that with them in the operating room, or you can go read about it more on your own time. And then of course you should be studying what you wrote down, and I'd recommend that you either come up with flashcards or whatever system works for you and review every night while you're on your rotation so you can really make the most of it. Also, just a quick random thing that's sort of unique to anesthesia that I want to mention is that if the resident or attending tells you to go home, that's not code speak for anything, and you really should just go home. Well, Feinstein, you can go ahead and go home. We've pretty much done everything that we needed to do today, and I'm just going to stick around and tie up a few loose ends, but you should really go on and go home. Well, Feinstein, you can go ahead and go home. We've pretty much done everything that we needed to do today, and I'm just going to stick around and tie up a few loose ends, but you should really go on and go home. <sighs> well, all the cases are done for the day. You can go ahead and go home if you'd like. All right, well, that wraps up this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any feedback or suggestions, I'd appreciate it if you leave it in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.